Do you love the Lord tonight? Say amen. amen. Give Jesus another good, good hand clap of praise. I thought as we were coming down uh, the road and thinking about the service tonight in the church, I said, you know, I said, I, I love this church. I do. I enjoy it. every time I get to come. Amen. Appreciate your pastor and uh, his good wife and all the young'uns. I'll just put it that way. Amen. And it's just an honor and privilege to be here. I think one reason why I like coming is I never feel any strings attached. You just get in, have church, worship God, let the Lord have his way. Amen. Somebody one time asked the question, Did you going to hold revival? I said, I don't want to hold anything. I just want to come and have church with them. Amen. I told my folk the other day, amen, I, I'm looking forward to this week. Amen. I love Easter. I love everything about it. Amen. I we had the communion at our place uh, last night. We had a lady in our church that's just really gifted, and basically our whole platform looked like an upper room, Bible time upper room. We set out the tables and the chairs, and we'd have them come up 12 at a time, and we'd have communion. Amen. We went through that process, I don't know, three or four times. Amen. There wasn't hardly a dry eye in a place, such a sweet presence of God. <laughs> Filled that house, we had a time. Amen. I'd, we'd get done, and I'd be ready for the next group to come down. I couldn't hardly get rid of this bunch up here because they were worshiping God. God was a moving and a blessing. Amen. I like it when the Lord comes by like that. How about you? That's what we're looking for. That's what we want is let the Lord have his way. I don't have to be heard. Amen. I, I just want to be a vessel that's used of God, that we can just worship God together, encourage somebody, uplift somebody, help somebody along the way, get somebody to the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. Let the Lord touch us and help us in the ways that only he can. Hallelujah. And we know that, again, God wants to do exactly that in every one of our hearts and lives. Can I hear a good amen? When it gets to the point that you can't be preached to anymore because you think you have attained, you're in trouble. When it gets to the point that you don't need to be taught anymore because you think you know just about all the stories and everything that's in the Scripture, you're in trouble. Amen. I, I know, again, there's some that thinks that they've got it all wrapped up. Amen. Got the good paper on it and nice tight bow. But the fact of the matter is... Amen. Every day I'm still learning what God wants to do in my heart and my life. I, I tell you, this is a thrilling way to walk with. Yeah, I'm telling you now, I'm glad I got the Lord that will go with me and show me things about myself. Amen. Let me know things that I need to do that I can get closer to him. And I believe, again, that's just exactly what he wants to do in this meeting. We're trusting and believing God for great things. Now, I know your people know how to pray around the altars. Amen. I appreciate that. We're just looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Good to have uh, Sister Willoughby with us tonight. She don't always get to go with me. Amen. But I'm glad she's with us tonight. Amen. And, and, and to testify. Uh, it, it just don't take over the service is the only thing I'm going to ask. Amen. Go ahead. I, I think I, I know the different ones. I, I call it the Chinese crud, amen, or the creeping crud, amen. Sickness and sinuses and upper respiratory, and I finally broke down and had to go myself, amen. And, and uh, But we're, we're doing some better. I'm feeling a whole lot better, I'll tell you that much, amen. I may have a coughing fit before it's over with, but I'll pull through, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Luke chapter number 22. I really feel like God wants to help somebody tonight. Hallelujah. I really feel it in my spirit, in my soul. Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 22. Is it? Okay. That'd be good. That'd be good. 
we're going to read here, and then we're going back up <coughs> to chapter number three. And just read one verse there. I think I may have, have touched on this when I, and I'm not sure. But the Lord really got to tug it in my spirit and my heart about really diving right into the middle of this tonight. Um, we're living in a, in a day and time where the enemy has his crosshairs pointed not to blow sparrows out of the sky. The devil's got his sights on the child of God. He wants to do everything he can to destroy and to bring them down. When you wake up in the morning, more important than going to work, more important than going to school, more important than eating food, drinking water, or even breathing air, you need to understand that the enemy is plotting for your soul. He's laying out all the snares and all the pits that he possibly can that he might be able to destroy you and tear you down. I don't care how long you've been saved. You might have been saved for a long, long time. And then again, it might have been just for a short, short time. But the fact of the matter is, the devil is out to destroy you. You got to understand that it's not just about you. It's, amen. But it's a mark that he can put against uh, heaven and a mark that he can put against God if he can take one of the little ones that the Lord has spared along the way. We need to understand that we're in a battle, we're in a fight uh, for everything that depends on eternity. In chapter 22 and verse 31, the Bible said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Anywhere in the scripture where you read where the Lord has called somebody's name twice, the words that immediately followed was words of great significance and importance. I think we can read in another place where he said these words. He said, Martha, Martha. The words that he spoke after that was words that had a great impact in her life. We read in the scripture where many times he would say, verily, verily, or of a truth, of a truth. What he's doing is trying to draw your attention to the things that's about to be said. And what he is about to say to Simon here are words of great significance. I can remember when I was a boy that was growing up and mama would call me and I could tell by the tone in her voice. Amen. There were times that she was really being loving. <laughs> And then there were times that she just called me to have a chore to do something. But if she ever said, Lawrence Albert Willoughby, I knew the words that immediately would be following was words of great significance. Can I hear an amen? Simon, 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 Simon. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm-hmm. But I have prayed for thee. I like that. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. One verse over in Luke chapter number 3 and verse 17. The Bible said whose span is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. And will gather the wheat into the garner. But the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Father, we thank you tonight again for your presence that we've already been made to feel in this service. I appreciate the singing, the testimonies, everything that's been done to uplift the name, the mighty name of Jesus. And now I pray, oh God, that you'd come by and that you'd anoint these lips of clay. That Lord, you'd lift us above the capabilities of men. Help us to say and declare the things that you would have us to say. Give us clarity of thought. I pray, God, that you'd anoint our ears in our hearts that we wouldn't be just hearers of the word but that we'd also be doers of the word Lord and move around these altars tonight help us to respond with open hearts toward you and we'll give you praise and give you glory and honor for we ask it in Jesus precious name and everybody said amen you may be seated in presence of the Lord amen I, I, I've looked at these verses a number of times when thou art 
And one of the things that God, when thou art converted, I'm not here tonight to really try to uh, split hairs or uh, try to be contentious in any way, shape, or form. I just want to draw one thing to your attention, that there's a difference in being saved and being converted. When you take a look at the original, when it, when it comes to the word salvation, the original is sotorema, which means to which means to be saved, to be delivered, to be pulled from. Amen. That's why we talk about being saved from a devil's hell. Amen. We've been saved, we've been pulled from. We we've been delivered from that. How many's glad you're saved tonight? I said, how many's glad that you're saved tonight? But that word converted in the original, it comes from the word striefo, which means to turn, to go into a different direction, to change your present course. There's a lot of folk that want to know about salvation. They want to know that they've been spared or that they've been delivered. But many times they don't want to know about conversion. They don't want to turn. They don't want to go in the opposite direction of the life that they've been living. Can I submit to you tonight that we're living in a day and time that we don't really want to change. We just want to add God to the mix. We, we, we just want to say, Lord, I accept you. But we don't want to do anything different in our hearts and in our lives. I believe that there's ever a time that we need to be saved and be converted and change our course and go in a different direction. I believe it's in this day and hour. Can I hear an amen? Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you. I know that the Bible tells me that I'm not to add to, neither am I to take away from the word. But I really believe tonight that I could take my name and put it in place of Simon's name, and I don't really believe it would change the meaning of this scripture. I believe it could say tonight, Larry, Larry. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. I believe you could put your name in there and it say, And Danny, Danny, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. There's nothing that the enemy wants to do anymore than to drag you down and destroy you and to tear your life all up. Can I hear an amen? You've got again to get it in your spirit and get it in your mind and then more than anything else he wants to rob you of everything that God has ever placed in your heart and in your life I thought many times as a boy growing up uh, when it come around birthday time, I know we got got one that's had a birthday. Amen. They they I done come to a conclusion, amen, that they stop at 60. No more birthdays after 60. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for that. Somebody said, how, how do you feel about that? I said, well, I'll just tell you this much. 60 got here a whole lot faster than what I thought it would. Amen. It just kind of flew here. But I can remember as a boy growing up, and when it came time for birthday, Birthday. I wasn't big on birthday cakes, I, I, but I love pies. I, I just teach, and cherry pie was one of my favorites. And I can remember how that mom, when it came birthday time, she, instead of baking a cake, she'd, she'd bake pies. I can remember how that she'd make two of them. Amen. I love them cherry pies. She'd make two of them. And one of them, and that's what we'd all put the candles in. We'd blow those out, and that's what everybody take a part of. That other one, <laughs> that was mine. Amen. We, we put that one up. Hallelujah. The only one got to get into that was good old Larry. But I can remember when she'd go to bake those pies. I, I can see her when she would stand. I lived there on Meadow lane in the rain and, and I can see her as she would stand there at the sink and just above the sink she had some, some cabinets and she'd open up that cabinet and I watched her as she would she would pull down a little, 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 it was about that big, hey amen, it was maybe about that big around out of the side of that was there a little handle and I can remember vividly that on the end of that little handle was a little red ball, hey amen and I'd watch her as she'd reach up there and she'd get that flower down and she would pour it in that, 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 I think we call them sifters, amen. And she'd pour that flour in that sifter. And then over a bowl, she'd begin to turn that, that handle and apply that crank. And I'd watch all that flour as it would fall out of the bottom of that.
that sifter. And I'd watch her as she'd go to make that cake. I, they may have had the popping dough pie crust then, but, but my mama was making it out of scratch. You know what I'm saying? And I'd watch her then, uh, Jacob, as she'd go over to where the, uh, the, 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 the waste basket was and where the garbage was. And she'd turn that can over and she'd shake it and little particles would come out uh, of that sifter. And I, I can remember as a small boy, I'd ask her, I'd say, Mama, what's that that you just threw in that garbage there? What, what is that? And I guess she might have thought maybe I was a little bit too young to understand. But all she would say is, Larry, that's not good for the pie. We just don't want to put that in the pie. I never dreamed as a boy standing there watching her do that. Had there ever come a time that I'd preach a message of how the devil wants to sift you. You see, the very same thing that she'd done with that flower is exactly what he wants to do to you. <laughs> There's nothing that he wants more than for you to end up in his sifter and apply the crank. Huh? And what he ends up doing is taking away all the good that God has ever put in your life. The peace, the joy, the happiness, knowing that I'm covered in the blood of the Lamb, the confidence in walking in the, in the place that God would have me to be, not being fearful that I'm going to be overtaken by anything that is in that world. There's nothing that he wants to do more than to empty you of all the good that God, all the blessings that he's poured in your life, the things that he's brought into your life when it comes not only to the material things but to relationships. And, and to know again that you're safe and on your way to heaven and replace that with fear and with anger and with frustration and with disappointment, the things that is not profitable for anything. You just don't want that in the pie. Can I hear an amen? And there's nothing he wants to do more than to end everything in your life and shake out all the bad after he's emptied you of all the good that God has ever done in your life I know that I may be preaching to those tonight amen that may not know God but I know I'm preaching to those too that have known of the joy of salvation and your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life and you're a fit candidate for heaven and you're looking forward to making heaven your home there's nothing that he wants to do more than to get you in that sifter and apply the crank and begin to work in your life in such a way that you walk away and you say what's the use there's no sense in me living this life anymore I've tried I've done my best I've laid everything out and it seems like I've given everything and now something else has hit me and if it seems like when I come out of one, who am I preaching to tonight? When I come out of one thing I'm going right back in to something else and I'm falling right back into a snare and right back into a train just about the time that I go to church and I rejoice on a Sunday night come Monday morning I'm staring eyeball to eyeball with that devil and I'm tired and I'm wore out and I just don't know what I'm going to do. Have you ever seen anybody that ended up being in a devil's sifter? <laughs> hmm. who, who do you know that used to shout the victory? Who do you know that knows of the peace and the joy and happiness of God? But tonight they're not in church. Tonight they don't know the Lord. Tonight they're not living that life that is pleasing to God. I'm going to tell you, it's not about age. I'm not talking just about those that are in a certain age bracket. I'm not just talking about those that are, that are uh, young people. I'm not just talking about the middle-aged mom and dad that's trying to do everything to make ends meet every week, amen, and hopefully at the end of the month everything be fine. I'm not just preaching about senior citizens, amen, that's loved God down through the years. I'm talking about individuals of all ages and of all brackets and of all walks of life that end up, amen, being in a, in a place that they find themselves and being emptied of all the joy and all the things that God wants to do. I, I watch him. I, I watch the enemy as he, he lays down the bait. <laughs> he, throws, he throws down the bait. 
Amen. You can't really point to anything and say that's wrong. Amen. You can't even point to it and say it's sin. Amen. But you're watching as a bait and you're steadily picking it up. Amen. You're not going to the hell holes of the world. You're not doing things that is contrary to God's word. Amen. You're still pretty much holding to what is right according to convictions of the church and what other people think. And you're, you're still holding on. Amen. But the bait is still being laid on down and you're picking it up. What are you talking about, priest? Anything that leads you away from the presence of God. Anything that takes away the time that you pray. Anything that leads you away. Amen. From the time that you worship and go to the house of God. Amen. Isn't it amazing that you always seem, oh Lord help me now. You always seem to have a good excuse. Every time you got a good excuse. Amen. Every time you got a good reason until you find yourself in the middle of the sifter and the devil has applied the crank and you can't understand how in the world did I get here? How did this happen? to me I'll tell you how you begin to walk away from the very thing that God wanted you to have in your heart and in your life oh. we're getting closer and, and closer and, and closer until you're right there and you wonder how in the world did I drift and get so far away from God. Huh? Huh. I remember some years ago we were pastoring in Alabama. We had a lady in in our church and, and I'm just going to call her, her first name was Sister Thelma. Sister Thelma was a live wire. I'm going to tell you she she just couldn't be still. I mean she just just all about moving and just just couldn't be still and and loved God, loved God. But I remember how one night she came to me and, and she said, Brother Willoughby, she said, I'm really disturbed. I said, tell me why. And she said, my boy, Buddy, said he's in jail tonight. And, and, and it's not looking good. I said, Sister Thelma, what in the world? And she said, he got to running with the wrong crowd and, and dope and drugs. And got a hold of him. He got caught, and he's in the jail. Would you go see him? I said, I'll be glad to go see him. I, I never will forget. It might have been the next day that we ended up going to that jail. I walked inside. I knew uh, the folks that was uh, running the jail and all, and, and they didn't even check up when I told them that who I came to see. They took me back. <coughs> <coughs> I never went inside of the cell. <coughs> Buddy, as soon as he saw me, those sprung up and came running to those bars and grabbed a hold of them. <coughs> he said, oh, Brother Willoughby, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you come. I said, Buddy, I'm glad that I can be here. He said, before you say anything, before you say anything, I want to tell you something. I said, all right. He said, I prayed. I've already prayed. I've already asked the Lord to forgive me. I've been raised in church. I know what's right. He said, but I, I just got to running with something that I shouldn't have been running with. And, 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 but I, I've asked God to forgive me. And, and I've asked him to come into my life. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to serve him. I've got some time that i got to spend in here, but I promise you that just as soon as I get out of here, I'm coming to the house of God and I'm going to live for God. I promise that's what's going to happen. I said, buddy, I said, I'm going to walk with you through this. I said, I'm going to come and see you. I'm going to be praying with you. Amen. I brought him materials. I brought him tapes. Amen. It seemed like he was just soaking it all up and taking it all in. It seemed like he was doing so, so, so good. When, 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 when one day when I went down there, he told me, he said, Brother Willoughby, he said, just a few days, I'm out of here. Just a few days, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm coming to church. I'm coming to church. I said, I'm going to be looking for you. I never will forget how 
<laughs> and he told me, he said, I'm getting out on, on Wednesday. He said, I'll, I'll see you Sunday. I, I'll be at church Sunday. Sure enough, I'm looking out the window of the parsonage, which was right there by the church, and I see a vehicle drive up that I don't recognize. It's one of the, it's a, it is the first one that drove up. And I looked and I watched as the door opened and Buddy got out. And I said, looky here. Amen. At least he come to church. Amen. And I never will forget, we started service that morning before we got through the second song. Old Buddy jumped to his feet and said, I want to say something. And when he started testifying, you couldn't understand another word he said. I mean, he he broke. He went to crying. He went to weeping. Amen. He went to calling out on God and raising his hands and praising the Lord. We end up having that altar service that morning. He was the first one in and the last one to leave. And it worked that way for a long, long time. When it came choir time, Buddy was up on a platform of singing. I mean, I was standing at the back door, Brother Denny, when I walked out. Hey, when he walked out, he shook my hand and he said, Pastor, what do you need done around here? I I'll rake pine straw. I'll pick up pine cones. Do you need any painting done? I'll do whatever needs to be done. I told that woman sitting right there. I said, you know, God done done something for him some way, somehow. If they get to talking about working around the church, something must have happened good. Amen. I mean tell you, every time the church doors was open, he was there and he was loving God and serving God. And after a period of time, Got to noticing that Buddy's not coming on midweek service. <laughs> got to work. Got to work. I, I, I got to work. I said, I understand. I said, we're, we're praying for you. We miss you. Amen. But then I got to noticing that when it came time to come to the choir, our Buddy wasn't coming to the choir. Then I got to noticing that he wasn't coming to the altar and praying like he used to do. And he wasn't testifying like he used to do. And the church attendance started dropping off more and more and more. Until one day I looked at her and I said, I'm going to Buddy's house. I'll see you when I get back. I drove to his place and it was a good little bit of a drive. When I got there, Buddy wasn't home. But his mom had told me what time he got in from work. And when Buddy drove up, I'm sitting on the front porch in the rocking chair. And I'm waiting on him. He gets out. He eases on up there. Everything just fine. We small talk a while. He meant joking around a little bit. Then he looks at me and says, Why are you here, preach? I said, Well, let me tell you why, buddy. Let me tell you what's concerning me. Let me tell you what's bothering me. And I went down and began to share with him what I just got done sharing with you. He looked at me. He said, oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm doing good. Everything's going to be all right. Huh? I'll, be, I'll be all right. And besides, Brother Willoughby, if I was to ever get out of church, I'd never go back to that life that I was living before. I said, buddy, let me tell you something. If the devil ever gets a hook in your jaw, you won't be the one calling the shots. He'll be the one telling you what you're going to do. You can't play that game. You, you, you can't outwit the devil. And if he ever gets a hold on you, he'll drain you of everything that God has ever done in your heart and in your life. And while I'm preaching to you, amen, tonight, there's a boy named Buddy that's in prison that'll be there for the rest of of his life because he went right back to running with the same crowd. A gun went off. Somebody died and Buddy was there with. I'm here to tell you something. That's exactly what the devil wants. Don't say I've been saved so long that that can't happen to me. Don't say amen I'm too good that that can't happen to me. If he ever gets you in that sifter, amen, you get to the point that you think I'll never be able to get out and you end up losing everything. That God has ever given you. Amen. You see, the Bible talked about Simon. Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you. But in Luke chapter 3, the Bible talks about the one that will have a fan in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge that floor. Amen. He'll, he'll take that fan and he'll beat that wheat. 
Bible times, they had those threshing floors. They'd lay that wheat on that threshing floor and they'd, and they'd beat that wheat. Amen. Separating the chaff that, and that, 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 that's around that golden grain and, and, and beat it until it separates. And then a gentle wind, and just the slightest little breeze would blow and it would separate the chaff from the wheat. It'll blow away the bad and leave the good. See, I would much rather be on God's threshing floor than to end up in the devil's sifter. Because when you end up in the sifter, he takes away all the good and leaves nothing but the bad. But when you're on God's threshing floor, he takes away all the bad and leaves nothing but the good. Amen. I would rather be in a place that he's working in my heart. I would rather be in a place that he's working in my life. I wish I could preach to you tonight that if you're living for God, you'll never have hardship. I wish I could tell you you'll never have a trial. I wish I could tell you that you'll never feel the pressure of anything that's going on around you. I can't preach that to you tonight. I can't tell you that tonight, but I can tell you this is that every time that God begins to work in your life he only has one thing on his mind and that's to take away that that is not good and we only leave that which is profitable not only to him but to those that are around you also can I hear an amen come on, come on. Come on, you will as a child of God have, have threshing floor moments yes, you will. hello you may be, oh, here we go. You may be here tonight and going through some things that you can't understand. Here, here's where I can, I mean, I don't know about you, but, and, I, and I'm, I'm a preacher, I, I'm a pastor. Lord, why, why is this happening to me? Hello? Lord, I'm, I'm trying here. Uh, I've lived this life. I'm, I'm doing my best for you. Why, why the trial? Why the trouble? Why? There's nothing that you'll ever go through in life except for one of two reasons. You got to get this. You got to get this right here. Amen. There's nothing that you'll go through, whether it's good or whether it's bad. That's not ex- two reasons. One, God is either trying to show you something about yourself that He can make you better, or He's put you in that circumstance to be a blessing. To somebody else. How can I get discouraged? How can I get depressed as a Christian? If I know that he's trying to improve me. That ought to make me happy. That ought to make me uh, thankful. Amen. Or if he put me there to be a blessing to somebody else. Now that's what the plan of God is all about. In order to be able to reach out and touch other individuals. So what happens? He works in my life. He takes away the things. I call it the rough edges. I call it the corners. He smooths out those areas of my life. He takes away the things uh, that is not good and leaves that which is fine. Look at David. Oh, I wish I had time tonight to preach about David. Yeah, you want to look at an interesting study. Look at all the threshing floors that David encountered in his lifetime. He numbered the men of Israel when God told him not to. And the people began to die all around him until he went to Arana and was willing to buy his threshing floor. Amen. In order to be able to offer sacrifice unto the Lord to turn back the curse that had been put upon the children of Israel. We know that there came a time when the Ark of the Covenant, amen, was put on a new cart. And David was there when Yusa put his hand to that cart. And because of that, he died. Take a look where it happened. It happened right beside a threshing floor. God was working in his life. And there's one thing he wants to do to all of us tonight, and that is work in our life. If you're here tonight and you're one of those that is struggling to try to be able to understand why, why, amen, I, I could understand it with somebody else, but Lord, it's me. You know my heart. You know my motives. You know my desires. David went to get the Ark of the Covenant and bring it back home, set it in its rightful place. To be able to rejoice and turn Israel, it would seem back to God. 
But David really wasn't doing it for all the right reasons because David wanted to be a, a great king. David had already positioned himself until God said, Listen, David, this ain't about you. This is not about titles. This is not about positions. This is about my presence. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? And when you understand that it's my presence that will make the difference in your heart and in your life, and I don't care. Let me tell you something. I feel this strong. You may be saved for years. You may have been living for God for years. And things are happening that you can't put your finger on and be able to, uh, to give definition as to what's going on. Let me tell you something. God will continually work in your life to bring you to a place that you understand it's not about you, but it's about others that is around you and other people that he's going to take you into their lives. I got I to gotta be willing to stay on that threshing floor. Amen. I got to be willing to let go of frustration. I got to be willing to let go of that world out there. Can I hear an Amen. I got to be willing to get to that point where I say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. When I get to that place that I'm willing to let him be in total control of my life. Now, I'm able to get up off that threshing floor and do something worthwhile for God. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's not pleasant. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But have you ever stood off to the side and watched other folk over there shouting and having themselves a Holy Ghost time and you ask yourself the question, what's wrong with me? Hello? Why don't I feel that? <laughs> Look what I'm going through this week. <laughs> Amen. I don't have nothing to shout about. I don't have nothing to rejoice about. Why, 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 why is this coming my way? And it seems like that the Lord is continually working to separate the wheat from the chaff. But if you'll stay there long enough, the wind. Oh, oh, that good Holy Ghost wind will begin to blow. And he'll blow that chaff aside. And they'll be left behind. Golden grain, wheat, bread, made into something that can be broken and fed to others that they might get strength out of what you've been through. I don't see any good out of this. I, I don't see how this is going to help me. I don't understand what the Lord's trying to do. Uh, let me tell you something. He's working in your life in such a way that others can get strength because of what you've been through. You see, you can't, I've said this before, I know, you can't teach more than what you've experienced. I don't know the first thing about it. All I know, go over there and flip a switch and lights come on. <laughs> Hello? I'm no electrician. I'd be crazy. Amen. To put my application in to be a teacher. Amen. In a Votech school. Amen. So I can show somebody else how to be an electrician. You don't know the first thing about it. Amen. But let me tell you, somebody's been, somebody's been there. Amen. And they've got hit a few times. Can I hear an amen? amen. And somebody that understands how that current flows. And what you need to do to direct it in a certain direction. Somebody's been there. Now that person can get up and that person can tell you something. And you're asking, oh, here we go. You're asking God to use you. You're asking God to bless you. You're asking God that through you that others might grow. But honey, you can't teach more than what you've experienced. And if you're asking God to let there be an anointing and to use you for his honor and his glory, honey, you're going to go through some things. The anointing don't come unless you're willing to give your all to him and let him flow through you. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. So where are you at? On, is it the threshing floor? Come on. Or is it the sifter? What's going on in your life 
that you're struggling with. And when will you get to the point that you say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Because the happiest individuals living for God are those that have submitted and given their all. You, you, can, get up, you can get up off that floor anytime you want to. He, he doesn't chain you to the threshing floor. He does not chain you to that. You, you can get up, you can say, Lord, this ain't fair. Hello. Lord, I, I don't think it's right. Others deserve this more than what I do. You don't have to stay there. Get up and leave anytime you want to. But here's what I found in 40 years preaching the gospel. If you leave the threshing floor, it won't be long. You'll be in the devil's sifter. Get up off the threshing floor. Go to your own life. Do your own thing. Say, this is something I'm just going to have to do on my own. You leave God's threshing floor. It won't be long. You'll be in the devil's sifter. And he'll be training you of anything that is worthwhile and anything that is good that God has blessed you with. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for your presence. Lord, I, I know you're here tugging on hearts and lives. I don't know what it's dealing with. I don't know what they may be going through. I don't know circumstances or situations. You do and they do, and that's all that really matters. There's some, Lord, tonight that are real close to going into the sifter. They're already plotting. They're already looking ahead, and they've already said when this happens and when that happens and when I get to this point, I'm going to do just what I want to do. They're steadily picking up the bait. They're steadily losing ground with you. They're steadily backing up, and they haven't took the time to look over their shoulder and realize that there's a sifter that's right at their heels. I pray tonight, oh God, that you'll help them. That you'll open their understanding. That you'll open their eyes. And you'll help them to see. Then nobody else may even know anything about it. Nobody else doesn't have a clue what's going on in their mind and in their spirit. Oh, I feel God in that tonight. Lord, I pray that you help them. This first night of this meeting, this revival, be a night that we yield ourselves to you. God, there may be those here tonight that love you and serve in you, but they're struggling because they can't figure out why some things are happening in their life. They're on that threshing floor, and you're working on them to separate that chaff to separate all the bad in their life, the things that is dragging them down, the things that robs them. They're in that place where you're working. And the enemy comes by and hollers in their ear, you don't have to take that. God really loved you. God really cared. But Lord, help them to understand it's because of that love that you're working in their soul. I pray, God, tonight that now we respond to you and your spirit that's in this house. Draw them, Master. Draw them as only you can. We'll give you praise and give you glory and honor. I wonder tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed, nobody looking around. I wonder how many here tonight and say, Preach, I want to be honest with myself and with God. But I tell you what, I've been picking up the bait. I, I haven't been drawn close to God. I've been drifting away. Oh, I, I, I go through the most. I mean, I, I go to church and I do all the things you're supposed to do in church and that. But 
when it comes to my everyday living and my relationship with God. And I can look back and say, I can remember when, but it's not that way now. But I don't want to end up in that sifter. I don't want to have all the good drained out of my life and have nothing but garbage. And that which is profitable for nothing. Preach, I want God to help me. I need prayer tonight. Amen. This will be the first night. I'm, I'm going to draw back close to God in this revival. I want there to be a stirring that will last. And I need prayer and help tonight. I don't want that sifter. Would you pray for me? Hold your hand up and put it right back down. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Hands going up. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I wonder how many might be here tonight and say, Preach, I love God. <coughs> I want to make heaven my home. But I've been on the threshing floor and I didn't really realize what was going on. I didn't understand that God was working in my life, that he might make me better. And all he's trying to do is to take away that which is bad, that he might leave the good. I mean, I, I wake up at night and I can't sleep and things bother me. And it's, it's nothing but God that's working, trying to show me I'm here to take you to another level. Trust me and let me be God in your life. You're here tonight and say, preach, I don't want to leave that threshing floor till God gets done with me. And I want him to work in my life in a way that nobody else or no other thing can work. And I want to say yes to him tonight. I've been struggling, but I'm not going to leave. I'm going to trust God to help me through all of this. And I need prayer tonight. Would you pray for me? I want to stay on the threshing floor. Hold your hand up tonight if that's you. I see those hands. I see those hands. Stand with me, would you? Stand with me. Hallelujah. Master, you've seen the hands that have been lifted. We don't want the devil's sifter. We do not want the devil's sifter. And God, even though at times when it's so hard, and sometimes I just think I'm going to break, but I'm on the threshing floor circumstances, situations, relationships, things that you're adding to my life and things that you're taking out of my life. Oh God, don't ever let me get up and walk away, but let me stay there until you're finished doing the work as you see fit. Hands were lifted tonight, hearts being honest with themselves and hearts being honest with you. And now, Lord, comes a time when we come to these altars and we pour our heart out and we make it up in our mind, I'm following Jesus. If God be for me, who can be against me? Lord, I pray that you deal in their hearts and lives enough to bring them to a place that they kneel in your presence. And Lord, we're going to give you praise and give you glory and honor. You're here tonight and you said, preach, that's me for one of the reasons or the other. You said, that's me. <clears throat> and I need prayer. You slipped your hand up and said, remember me. I want you to step out of your seat right where you at and come on. Let's kneel down here at these altars. And let's go to talking to the master about it tonight. Don't care who you are, what your last name is, what title or position. If God's dealt in your spirit, hey amen, now's the time to respond. You lifted a hand. Maybe you didn't lift your hand. But you said, preach, that's me. Hey amen, I'm not going to fight this. I'm going to say yes to God. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God's going to bring some victory in this house tonight. I believe God's going to bring some victory in this house tonight. Amen. Come on, church. Let's the rest of us now come. Find somebody. Pray with. Let's believe God on their behalf tonight. They're not going in the sifter. Amen. They may be on the threshing floor, but no sifter. I'm going to be better through it all. I'm going to be better through it all. I'm going to be better through it all.